when we're storing decks like these old garrods, uh, this one and that one over there, um, they tend to have uh, ceramic, old ceramic type pickups, which are um, very high output, but um, they require very high load to test them. And if I've got these um, not connected to the original equipment, which is, would normally be a valve amp, um, and this one, uh, it's a bit difficult. I can't plug it into my Hi-Fi. They don't. The Hi-Fi loads it down badly. Um, Hi-Fi auxiliary inputs are normally about 47k or something, and these um, pickups need a very high resistance. Otherwise, all the bass goes, and they don't sound right. I'll just show you. Um, here's some pickup details, very common uh, pickups like the ACOS GP93 series. Uh, shows you here that the load must be less than one mega ohms on those. Deca DRAM, here's a Deca DRAM, very common uh, ceramic pickup. It actually says here the load is. Um, two mega ohms and uh, here's some others that you get in the really old pickups uh, the Ronette stereo and a Garrard crystal cartridge this is actually a Ronette um, mono one anyway it says um, one mega ohm 100 picofarad load and this one says um, load one mega ohm again so all of them need at least one mega or more to work properly otherwise you find that the base uh, just suffers um, but on uh, slightly later ones you might get a decent moving magnet uh, pickup which is a low, much lower output and uh, we will need equalization because um, these ceramic ones uh, pizza ceramics they they nicely uh, give you uh, a treble um, boost. Was it the other way around? Bass boost treble cut <laughs> automatically when run into a high load. And they don't need RIAA equalization. But when you run in the moving magnet ones, uh, they will need equalization and. Um, it can be a bit confusing sometimes whether you need it or not. Uh, for instance, this Goldring G800 and this AT1110E says here they only need um, 47k load, or well, 47 to 100, I assume that means. And this one says um, the load resistance is here, 47,000. So, um, Various pickup cartridges. Here's a Shaw. Um, although it's that's the coil resistance, and it needs to work into 47k. So most modern uh, pickups became 47k input, and you can buy. Um, here's a very cheap, which costs less than 20 pounds, RIA equalizer. Um, it's got some gain, but not a lot. If you plug this into your auxiliary input on your hi-fi, put this between the cartridge in here and then into your hi-fi, which a lot of hi-fis don't have a phono input anymore. But they do have an auxiliary input. Uh, it still doesn't give enough gain. It's a 47k input, so I can't plug the ceramics into it. They just don't sound right. Um, so, uh, I built this buffer circuit, it's a bit of a mess here, just a few components and a volume control. It's got about a gain of times 10. And so I can feed this out of here into the buffer and off to the amp. Or, I've designed this with a, about a 1 mega ohm, just over 1 mega ohm input resistance. So I can connect this directly to the ceramic cartridges and um, ceramic cartridges have very high output at least 10 times more than uh, the mag mm moving magnet type 
so I can feed them directly in here and I've got about times 10 on the pot if I want and I can feed that into the auxiliary input on the hi-fi so a hi-fi amp uh, will need at least um, normally 0.75 volts to get max output and a ceramic cartridge will only give about 50 to 100 millivolts so it's going to need about times 10 um, moving magnets can be re really low only about 5 millivolts so um, and as I said this doesn't give really enough output you have to turn the high fire up really high so feed that in here and uh, you can adjust that up a bit more um, I'm going to build both of those two into this little alloy box and I'm going to put a switch so I'll switch it from RIAA or the buffer I'm going to feed the RIA amp all through the buffer all the time. The buffer goes on the output of here, and um, or I can throw a little little switch. I've got some uh, these sort of little potentium, a uh, little um, switches, and uh, switch it to just through the buffer for ceramics. It's got about. Well, between one and two mega ohm load. Else, if I connect it up to the MM, I switch it the other way. It goes through here. It's got 47k input. And then this feeds out through the buffer. It's a low output impedance feed the line. Now that all go in there, and that'd be very useful uh, for anyone interested. I just got a bit of circuit here. It's a bit messy, but you can see it's very straightforward. Got. Um, there's a, one half of a little op amp. I'm using OPA2134, which is a low noise dual op amp. Can run up to 18 volts, 9 to 18. The um, I've got an 18 volt supply for the um, that little uh, RIA amp, um, so I can join them together and run them up 18 volts. It'd be fine. These things run up to about 22 volts max. Uh, just split single sided to a uh, split split the supply there the 10k 10k feed it in there just to give the output at half the supply voltage to start with uh, very high input uh, impedance I've used a 2 meg 2.2 meg there and I've got 2.2 meg off the split power supply so that means when you feed this in, it sees both of them, and it's just going to be over one meg input it sees. I'm going to put 100 picofarad across the front as well so for stability, because so it's very high input impedance. Um, if you disconnect that, it would probably oscillate. Um, also, on the feedback, so you set the gain there, 10k, and... I've got um, as a 10k there with 100k in series, so I can vary it from 10k up to just over 100k, which is 10 to 1 on the pot. There's two of these, of course. Um, let me see now. So, and I've also put a 47 peak of farads across those. That knocks the um, gain down from above about. Well, getting them for 20 kilohertz, uh, it starts knocking off. So don't get any high frequency um, oscillations. Just a decent capacitor output. Just put a resistor across there, just in case it's not connected, so it doesn't charge up. Uh, that feeder line, a long line to your auxiliary amp. So it's all very straightforward, and um, just a few extra capacitors on. But there are some on the other circuit just to keep the any noise off the power supply. Just across that, that's a splitter there. So if you've got nine volts in, it's four and a half there, whatever. Just to a very simple circuit. But um, I'll join them together in this box, put a switch, put the sockets on for the phonos, and an input for the uh, volt voltage, and that'd be a useful bit of kit for me for testing um, various turntable pickup cartridges uh, before they go back into the cabinet or whatever they came out of. 
Right, I've built the buffer and the RIAA circuit into this little alloy box. I uh, managed to get it all in just about. Uh, got the inputs there. Uh, power supply, I put a, a light on it, an LED. Had to do a few mods to the RIA equalizer circuit, which I bought uh, very cheap, as I said, but um, it, it was uh, set up with some. You have to watch the earthing arrangements. It had um, like a floating earth, so I had to uh, do a couple of mods so that I could uh, join them together on one power supply. Uh, volume control on the buffer. Um, and these little switches there, three position actually, up, down and centre is off, which is useful, which means I can either select the um, the equaliser which and the buffer together, or just the buffer. And then the centre position when it can turn the one of the channels off. I've got one on each channel. Uh, so I can turn one of the channels off and just listen to the other channel, see if there's any problems. Anyway, um, I sprayed, sprayed the box black, put a bit of foam padding on it, goes on there. And it's pretty quiet. Um, run it off the 24 volts, uh, a cheap 24 volt um, supply. Uh, you could use lower, but I mean, might as well use a high one. Um, and um, so I can test the record player, uh, just plugged into it now. So. Um, and uh, through the hi-fi, I can see what it sounds like. And then when I, I'll do, um, I'll test it using the buffer on the ceramic one as well. Uh, oops, I haven't got any, turn the hi-fi out. And I can adjust the volume on, on here to um, get the correct volume on the hi-fi, so I don't have to turn the volume control up too high. I can turn this down. Or I can adjust it up just, just to get the right volume. That's got about a 10 to 20 times. Uh, and I only needed it to go up a, a little bit. Okay, I'll uh, get another um, deck, one of these, and get it plugged up. And they got the ceramic pick up and see what it sounds like through the buffer. Okay, I've hooked up an old garage deck with a ACOS a stereo crystal cartridge in it, a GP93, uh, according to the blurb. Uh, GP93 needs um, not less than one mega. They call it a crystal cartridge. Um, GP93 stereo. Um, now normally if you try plugging this into your hi-fi with about 47k load on the auxiliary uh, it would just not enough volume and uh, it would be your treble no bass. I'll just uh, demo that. I can um, and the other this is the buffer which has got a high impedance buffer uh, switch to the buffer not the RIAA and a little volume control on the back. Um, and not only it doesn't just buffer, but it can give you gain of 2 to 20. So um, if I just start this off, give it a bit of music for a little while. So that's the volume, that's all you can hear on the hi-fi if you just plugged it in, without, just straight in. So I'll just um, put the other channel on, see how loud it is. That's just through the buffer. That's through the buffer and uh, I'll just connect up the other channel as well. Let's put this on for Connected up that channel and this one's off. Put that one on as well. So it's uh, working just fine. We've got the volume on the back. Can turn it up even higher. J 
just reject that before YouTube will recognize it. So um, if you want to use an old deck with a crystal or ceramic cartridge, you've got to have either a valve amp, which have high impedance inputs, or a buffer, one meg or higher buffer, with a bit of gain as well to match it up to your auxiliary input on your amp. You can't use RIAA because the crystal and ceramic already have an, a pretty rough RIAA type of equalization to um, cut the treble and boost the bass so uh, the crystal does that automatically. So if you put it into an RIA amp, which has tons of gain anyway, it would just give hideously overloaded of volume. So that's the project finished and um hope it's been uh, useful for anyone interested.